there's a lot of nematodes that are taking a big cut of the grower's profit. Um, and there are not very many good solutions for nematodes because they're in the soil, they're not very visible, a lot of the, it's kind of hard to apply products to the whole soil profile and getting rid of them. And a lot of the nematicides, the past nematicides that are, were pretty effective, have been taken out of the market because of safety or environmental issues, things like methyl bromide. Well, nematodes is a very big group of animals, and not only a big group of animals, but a very diverse group of animals. They are worms. In, in, in the soil, they're microscopic, um, they're round, they're, and they're not segmented, so not, they're not earthworms. There is beneficial nematodes, nematodes that eat other nematodes or eat bacteria or feed on fungi, and there's also nematodes that are pests. The ones that we consider pests in agriculture are the ones that parasitize plants, in other words, feed on plants. So when I'm mentioning nematodes, I'm just talking about the plant parasitic ones that feed on plants. In the case with potato, the root lesion nematode seems to have a relationship with a fungi called verticillium, verticillium dalliae, verticillium wilt, and makes the, the, the plant more susceptible to this pathogen. Um, and the nematode also just reduces yield by their feeding. And root lesion nematode is a problem in almost every crop that is grown in Michigan. Root knot nematode, it is also a significant pest. The, nor the northern root knot nematode is the most common in Michigan, but it's problem in ornamental plants like the lilies is problem and fruit trees is problem. And it's problem in a lot of vegetables, especially root vegetables grown in muck. Um, soybean cyst nematode is maybe the number one yield robber of soybeans in the United States. Um, it, is the, it, it is the number one yield robbing pathogen in the United States. Um, and it's widespread. It's in every county in the, in, in the lower half of the lower peninsula of Michigan. Well, I met Brad thanks to Dr. Bird. Um, Dr. Bird introduced me to Brad. Um, and we started working with him and Brad asked me to test some of his compost effects on nematodes and we designed several experiments and I kind of recommended some new mixtures, um, some things that I thought might have impact on nematodes and turned out they did. And the ones that we created with the objective of controlling nematodes have turned out to be very effective. Um, and in some cases, if you, if you, you have 100% compost, the nematode mortality is 100%. In other words, nematodes cannot survive in that particular um, compost combination. Um, and of course, as you dilute it in the soil, it will kind of depend on the, on, on the concentration, the effectiveness. But we have seen high effectiveness that does have an impact in yield and does have an impact on disease. Product like compost that is so, it has so many uses, has so many benefits, nutrients, improves uh, the soil structure, and also have an effect on nematodes. That's, that's a lot of value for, for one product and it's, it's interesting and it, and it provides some biology. Uh, it provides some beneficial organisms. So it was worth, it's, it's worth exploring and we, we decided to explore this possibility. And we have found some products that have very good results. Not all composts are created equal. LAB, the LAB blend, we had the the best. Um, we had that the best results. There's a couple things that they need to do. One is sample and know if they have the problem. Um, know which nematode they have. And depending on the crop, 
would be the, st the, the steps that they would take. Um, let's take a, an, an example crop, a potato. If you take a soil sample and you find high levels, you know, above threshold levels of root lesion nematode, um, there's a couple things that you need to do. One is rotate, you know, and this, this goes the case for every crop. You need to rotate. You can't plant the same crop over and over again. Um, others, and, and plant cover crops that are not good host for that particular nematode. And, um, or plant crops that are not such a good host. Um, using compost that, that, have, that reduce nematode numbers, it's an important step that can be taken that can improve soil health. Other steps that can improve soil health can, can, be, can be helpful. Uh, there are nematocytes that are effective. There are growers that use fumigation. Fumigation, depending on the fumigant, not all fumigants are created equal, but there are fumigants that will reduce the numbers. The numbers do tend to, the nematode numbers do tend to recuperate and sometimes to even higher levels than before in part because of a reduction of biological control, but there is a, um, a temporary um, reduction. Um, so there are several things that the grower can do and they need to, it, it, I would recommend also that they submit samples to the diagnostic lab and get recommendations, for example, at Michigan from Michigan State University and, um, and talk to their extension agent or possibly even me.